alive and alert on the north side of the dirt. It's your man D Real coming at you with another Be Real with D Real, where entertainment explains it. You saw the title, you know why we're here. Philadelphia issue number seven. See, well, I'm gonna get to rolling on this. I'm rolling whether y'all want to roll with it or not. So you can roll with it to get rolled over. I'm playing, but y'all should stick around for it because it's getting ready to. It's getting ready to kick into another gear. Um, and I'm finna get into it. But before I get into it, let's do what we need to do so we can do what we want to do. I was a little slow on that, wasn't I? Comment, like, subscribe, and share to be real with D-Real. Pay so that when new material comes out, you get it. If you're digging what a brother shoved to put some dirt in my bucket, comment, like, subscribe, and share. Why? Why or why? Because edutainment 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 is what i do baby and we're gonna be agitating on this one right here philadelphia number seven jupiter rising now, for those of you that ain't been following, I give you a, a, a quick scorecard of the people who's out here, current players, real quick. You got James Sangster Jr. He is a detective. I think he's lieutenant now for the Philadelphia Police Department. You got a, a city coroner, Jose Scotch. I'm going to go back and get her last name. I promise. But she's Jose. And that ain't a woman thing. I don't mean, I, just, I don't know why I can never remember her last name. I always want to say Salazar. And I know that's not it. But she's the city coroner and thanks to Junior, Jimmy Junior's lady love. There is also Abigail Adams, who is the alpha vampire bat lady, the alpha doll whatever she's the top vampire right now until somebody come along who better hmm hold that thought anyways then you got folks like toppy who's a sidekick of abigail we still got britney britney's around little girl who's really a vampire traps perverts and all that kind of a thing but let's move on into the story like i said here we are you got a. Uh, Weird things happening in Philly because the vampires are still around. So, thanks to Junior, Jimmy Junior is the guy you call when weird shit pop off. Basically, somebody got holes in them, somebody bleeding and you can't see where it's coming from or anything like that. Call Jimmy. Jimmy the one handle that. Jimmy Junior. You got bodies laying around and Jimmy Junior looking at it like, hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Fascinating. That is really cool or weird or gory or whatever it's looking like at the time. He's in his office at his desk dealing with things because he know he's got to deal with the supernatural and they got a special task force put together to deal with that specifically. But sometimes, sometimes, People get through the cracks and bodies get to the corners. And rather than have the, the, the dead rise hungry for blood, you got Jose in there with a steak ready to handle business. So they got him a little system. And James Sangster sits at his desk and sits at his desk and sits. Is he really the cat? We need to call when weird shit pop off. Well, let's find out later on. Right now, we turn our attention to Chestnut Hill, which is where Abigail Adams stay. And we see an old man being bled in the closet. Vampires. So we already figured they drinking blood. You ain't got to be ripping everybody apart all the time. You know, we got to get refined. And 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 Abigail is refined. She gonna kill somebody's grandfather. Um, wasn't it supposed to be young brides? Yeah, I guess what he's doing or what she's doing is it's a blood source, 
and not necessarily uh, somebody she wants to turn. So like cattle, that's, but does it mean old blood is a better vintage like wine? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, she's got the gang there. You see Toppy's there. Um, uh, Brittany's there. That's like her little black daughter. Anyway. Toppy ready to get some revenge on Seesaw. But Seesaw messed his face up. But but Abigail, like, don't even worry about all of that. We're going to get to all of that in a minute. Let me tell you this story. I'm going to tell you this story about this slave named Jupiter. The first time I saw him, he was a strong, big black buck holding up a wagon, fixing a wagon wheel, and it had that halo on. Everybody know what a halo is? Yeah, they used to put those on. I ain't even going to get into it. Anyway, he when he fixed the wagon wheel, he kept his halo on, put his muzzle back on, and went on about his business. And Abigail was fascinated with this big, giant, black man. And she said, what's the story with him? Because they were seeing Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson had him as a slave. And so when they were younger, Thomas Jefferson and Jupiter used to play together almost like friends. But, you know, when you're playing with your friends, you say things to your friends and just be like, oh, you stupid, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, and it might be cool if, if they cool hearing it, but somebody big over here, oh, you you a slave. You ain't a friend. You a convenience. You need to be put in your place. And they said they sold his family off. He still didn't get put in his place. We done isolated him. We don't know what to do with him. And Abigail said, sell him to me. And that is precisely what they did. They sold Jupiter to Abigail. Abigail told him, take your, take your halo off. Take your muzzle off. I want to show you some different stuff. And she showed him some different stuff. Even though we ain't seeing it in the frame, y'all know what it was. You know, it was that Mandingo thing going on. But she was doing it for a reason. She was getting something out of it. Because let's be clear. She's turning him. And essentially, as far as we know, Jupiter is still around. But she turned him into a vampire because she wants to see. With all of that trauma that he's got built up inside of him from being beat all the time, from having his family sold off, and all of the atrocities that were visited upon him by the Jefferson family, will he collapse or will he explode? Well, either way, he going to be loyal to Abigail for giving him the ability to deal with it in such a dynamic way. How does he choose to deal with it? Well, one night, some thieves come on the property looking to steal and got their lives stolen. Abigail hears the commotion, comes in, and he's sitting there like a puppy that done boo-booed on the floor. But she lets him know, oh, no, Jupiter, you did good. This is exactly what I want you to do. For me, this is like changing a wagon wheel. You take that muzzle off, rip up flesh, and go ahead and put it back on, and we can keep it pushing, baby boy. You doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You right where you need to be with old Abigail. And Abigail love you for it. Let's switch away from Chestnut Hill for a second and get down here in the West Philly. And we got Jose and Jimmy Jr. in the bed together and they having pillow talk. And what are they pillow talking about, pray tell? Um, he's telling her he worried about not measuring up to daddy and he's feeling inadequate. And rather than deal with that, she she um she she gonna go ahead and give him some booty. And after that, you know, because look right there, she asking him, feel better? What, what, what did she do to make him feel better? See, we ain't slow. We picked up on that. Cause that's good writing from Rodney Barnes. He knows he's not dealing with a slow audience. He knows we picked up on that. Images, words, so wonderfully put together. There you go. And on to the relationship thing. So they talking, oh, I'm not good in relationships and, and, and I have problems in relationships and I want this to work out and, and I like you and I like your Latin loving and I like your black loving. And, and so now they go steady. They going together. 
They an item. They serious. They booed up. That's what's going on between Jose and Jimmy Jr. But let's get back to the, to, to Chestnut Hill and hear what Abigail talking about. Because Toppy getting tired. He done bucked up and he done started making noise. And he like, why are we sitting around listening to little your old funky stories when we got to go out here and get some clap back? And she like, okay, how do you suggest we clap back, Toppy? And Toppy's like, oh, we're going to go every night. We're going to go out and kill every night. We're going to go out and kill every night. Okay, Toppy, what's going to happen when we ain't got nothing to, to get blood from? Listen, man, just calm down. And we'll go about doing what I want to do because I'm going to tear it down. From the top to the bottom, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn it all down. And it's easy to do that when you ain't letting your passions govern you. And Toppy talks out of turn one last time and say, "You didn't lose anything." She like, "You stupid! I lost a whole husband, and you talking about him like he weak." But let look here. I'm the big dog, basically. And if you say one more thing crazy, I'm gonna send you right there to be with him. You got me, and that's it. Abigail let them know, baby, I'm the alpha quit playing. And here's my plan. Listen to me, you lower vampires. What we doing is, since lobbyists and, 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 and billionaires and, and, and media moguls run the world and program the world and tell the world what to think and do, we gonna start killing them. So they kick rocks. Straight over to the governor's mansion with Jupiter. Oh, my goodness. And Toppy takes the chains and the muzzle off of him and turns him loose in the governor's mansion. What is he doing in the governor's mansion? Waiting on the governor so he can take his muzzle off and start eating the governor's flesh and ripping the governor apart. Meantime, while he's ripping the governor apart, Toppy and the gang. Oh, wait a minute. He's bringing new meaning to the term tear you limb from limb you dig well like i said oops i got i got anxious because toppy and the gang was having a good time too look at that britney him and then they doing their thing they doing their thing that mean everybody in the governor's mansion caught it everybody got it everybody got torn to shreds and do you know what happens when people get torn to shreds in the governor's mansion you call Jimmy Jr. Why? Because he's the guy you call. When weird shit pops off. And that's what popped off. And this is where we end. Issue number seven of Philadelphia. What kind of ramifications is the presence of Jupiter going to have now? Because he looks like he already a problem and a half as a human being, and but he's a vampire with at least a hundred years under his belt. A couple hundred, actually. Now what are we going to do? Odds are stacked for Jimmy Jr. He going to need to find Seesaw because Seesaw ain't been seen or saw. <laughs> Got to find a way to deal with this situation because Jimmy Jr., the man people coming to now. We wish you well, Jimmy. <laughs> That's it for now, y'all. But fret not, I'll be coming at y'all with another one of the mother ones. And until I do, y'all, y'all, be good. Be good to each other.